Hello. Today's practical life lesson is repurposing the material into something else. We sometimes talk about the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. There's also repurpose. So in this case, I'm going to take a wool sweater. It's very nice wool, but it's got a couple holes in it. It was very well loved, and it was also starting to get too small for anyone in my house. So what I have done with it is I'm going to use this, especially because it's wool, to repurpose and make into something new. So what I have here is a, an arm mitt, and let's see if I can get it over my sleeve. I should have put on a short sleeved outfit for this one. <clears throat> so this will keep me nice and warm, especially when I am out of doors, when I'm camping, things like that. Um, wool is especially useful living in Montana because if you are out of doors, wool will protect you very, very well against all sorts of issues. For one thing, it will insulate you even if it is completely frozen solid. It will still offer some insulation to help protect you. Now, a lot of the fabrics that we wear are man-made and cottons and things like that do not insulate you when you are out in the wilds. So if you have wool, wool on the other hand is an amazing material. The wool itself is made of many, many, many tiny little hairs all wrapped in and twisted around. And what that creates are tiny little air pockets. Now that air pocket will keep the traditional, like the same amount of heat, so it will regulate your body. In the winter time, that's nice because it will stay warm for hours and hours. It will keep that body heat regulating inside of it. In fact, NASCAR drivers used to all wear woolen suits because if they were in an accident, they didn't want to catch, uh, catch fire. So NASCAR and other places for a very long time used wool as a way of protecting their drivers. You can also use it to keep you cool in the summertime. Now we often think of wool as being a heavy winter kind of a fabric, but in fact, there are very many light airy woolens that are extremely comfortable to wear in the summertime. Again, those little tiny air pockets, in that case, they will keep you cool and regulate your heat especially if you get that wool a little bit damp, it can keep you very nicely cooled for hours on end. I have even seen a ball dress made out of a special wool that was so light and airy, it almost looked like some kind of magical fairy fabric. So wool does not have to be itchy and it does not have to be thick and heavy and only for winter time. This, for example, is merino wool and it is extremely soft. So. I'm going to make a pair of these, and this is something that my daughters and I can use when we are out of doors, especially if it is just a little bit cold outside, not quite cold enough for wanting full gloves. However, if I want to wear full gloves, I can put my glove on, flip this back over, and I can continue to work. So in order to make this, I very simply took off the sleeve. I did have to do a little bit of reworking. And so I did have to sew some of it. And if you'll recognize, I have my sewing kit here, my Hussif. And the tool that I'm going to use first is my seam ripper. Now, most people have a, a much smaller plastic seam ripper. For example, here's one that I have that's a modern seam ripper. This one is the same idea, just has a nice fancy wooden handle. So I'm going to use my seam ripper. Now you'll notice here, there is a hook area, that's the sharp part. This is covered in some kind of plastic or enamel, and that's so that I don't poke through my fabric. And then this part here I can use as a tiny pick, and I can also use it to help guide my tool so that I can keep my straight lines. So while I'm using this, I am going to pull apart the threads and this is how I'm going to take something that was once sewn together and unsew it. Now you also end up using this tool if you make a mistake. 
And if you have to unsew something, it can be very, very sad. Uh, for example, I have many times been making something and discovered that I put the sleeve on inside out. That is why we refer to sleeves as sleeval. I don't know why, but they are <laughs> rather complicated. And the thing that I have probably messed up more than any other whilst sewing. So as I come around, sometimes I work towards myself. When I'm using something like this, it's very small. I don't normally cut towards myself with a knife. This is not the same thing. Now you can also push away from, your, from yourself. And a lot of people will do it this way too. Now I have a tendency to do it this way, just the way that it's easier for me to hold the fabric. Um, there really is no right or wrong way to do it. So if you've got someone in your family who's saying, no, 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 do it this way, just follow their directions. Now, if I want to, I could simply trim along the edge, especially because I'm not concerned if it has a perfectly even edge or not. So what I can do here is I can trim around and I'm basically doing the same kind of idea. Um, and especially since this is wool and it has been washed a few times, it's a little bit felted. Felting is what happens when you've already knit the wool strands together, but then you go through and you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And that is actually the main material for yurts, which is a kind of home that is very popular in areas like in Mongolia and uh, places where there's some pretty extreme winter weathers. I've also seen quite a few yurts in Montana. They're a, a really impressive engineering feat. And when they make the felt traditionally for a yurt, they actually use a horse to pull it along behind and to help it get all smashed together and felted. Now I have here my sleeve pulled out, but what you might notice is I actually have the sleeve end here and then the part that goes around my wrist. I did try it the other way and it just didn't work very well. The sleeve was kind of designed for wrist at this end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim very carefully all the way around following the little white line to help me keep my line straight. And as I go around, I'm going to get this little extra piece of wool. Now, I wouldn't necessarily have to have incorporated it, but I like having mitts that cover the back of my hands especially because if I'm outside in the cold and I want to protect my hands, um, sometimes sleeves just don't come down far enough. And if it's windy or something like that, it's nice to have that extra little bit of fabric. Now, I'm not going to throw this away. I have basically created a lovely little vest here. So even though there's still some places where I've got holes and things in it, I can still use this and uh, I'm still kind of tossing about a couple different ideas for what I could use this for. Now, you can use it for all sorts of fun things. Um, stuff like this make really great leg warmers, things like that, but you can also use these to make toys. And quite often, that is how children would get toys, is they were simply made out of the cast off clothing or things that couldn't be mended anymore. If you've ever seen sock monkey toys, they're sock monkeys because you made them from socks. So be creative. I personally think this guy would make a really lovely sitherly snake that perhaps one of my twins would enjoy playing with. So when I get all done with this part, you can see here that what I did was I simply turned it over and then I hand stitched along the bottom. So I'm going to do the same thing here to match. I'm simply flipping this over lining up the white parts, and that way when I sew it all together, it'll be the exact same length. Now in order to prepare my thread, there are a couple things that I always do when I'm hand sewing. For one thing, use good quality thread. There is nothing more frustrating than putting a lot of time and effort into a sewing project, only to find out that your thread was really low quality and then it falls apart as soon as you go to use it. 
That's just not an enjoyable experience, so we don't recommend doing that. Now, what I'm going to do next here, I'm going to select a needle, and actually I'm going to take out the thread that was in this one. This is a good, nice, sturdy needle. There are different needles for different kinds of jobs, and this one is just kind of a, an everyday needle. It's a little bit thick, but that's okay because the wool um, is a very forgiving fabric. If I were going to sew something really, really delicate, I would end up using a really, really delicate needle. So I was having trouble getting my um, thread through, so I put a little bit of beeswax on it. Now I'm going to double over my thread here. You don't always double over, but sometimes you do. And when I tie the knot at the end, see how I have two loose ends? I'm going to pinch it together, wrap it around my finger, and here you can see it overlaps into a little X. I'm going to roll it off my finger, get a good nasty twist in there. Then I just slide it down to the end. Now you can see where I've got the two ends tied together with a little tiny tip. Now, see when I hold it together, how it gets all kind of nasty and tangled? If you don't wax your thread, it will constantly tangle on you. So I take my little bit of beeswax and I simply go over my thread several times until it is nicely waxed. Some people even go so far as to iron their thread. Now, if you're doing some really fancy embroidery or something like that, yeah, iron your thread. It's a thing. I, however, usually just go through with the wax several times like this. Now, as I have waxed my thread now, see when I go like this again, it doesn't loop up and it won't knot back on itself. This is much more fun to sew with. So, as I flip this over, I am just going to sew as I go. But especially when you are first beginning, you're going to want to pin things to make sure that it doesn't move and doesn't go where you don't want it to go. Oftentimes, you'll see people sewing with straight pins, and your average straight pin looks like this, where it has a, a simple end that has been flattened, sharp and pokey on that part. You might also see quilting pins that usually have a much, much bigger end. And uh, those are pretty commonly used as well. Now, if you are just starting out sewing though, I usually recommend that for kids, you start with something as nice and safe as a safety pin. So instead of using straight pins when you're first beginning sewing, I would recommend definitely start by using some safety pins. There are also some times where I'm sewing something and if it's really tight and small, I would much prefer to use safety pins than poke myself a million times. I uh, was working on a project uh, where I was quilting a, a, an entire quilt by hand and I did all the quilting in about two and a half days and it ended up doing some really wild things to my fingertips just from touching the needle over and over again. Well, I was telling my good friend, Mrs. Spring, about this, and I said, oh my goodness, I had no idea that sewing could be such a dangerous task. And she said, oh yes, it's a blood sport. And I had to laugh because there's this adorable grandmother telling me that sewing is a blood sport. But I did have to agree that, you know, sometimes you do poke yourself and you got to be careful with irons and do not drop your needles on the floor. No one wants to find that in their stocking feet going to the bathroom in the middle of the night. So as you're sewing, it is important to keep nice, even stitches. And the reason that you want to keep those nice, even stitches is because that will help keep the fabric orderly, and it will make sure that it is less likely to unravel. Now, the closer together you put your stitches, the sturdier that is going to be. And sometimes, especially in the beginning, people get a little tired and their stitches get wider and wider and wider, but then it gets easier and easier and easier 
to catch your thread, break it, and then the whole thing falls apart. And that's really disappointing when you put some work in. So I recommend that whilst you are doing something like this, if it's going to take you a few minutes, this is the perfect time to listen to a story. So you can listen to an audiobook, and while your hands are busy, your brain is also busy enjoying listening to a tale. So whatever audiobook you might choose, I would highly recommend going on Sora, for example, if you are in the district, and that is free and available. There are also many other audiobooks available. You can get some from the public library. You might have a subscription service like Audible or something else that you can get them on. And there are tons of podcasts out there. You can listen to podcasts on all sorts of topics. So quite often, I do my sewing either while visiting or while listening so that I don't get entirely bored. Now, I'm not going to make you sit through the entirety of me sewing all of this, which is why I already finished the other one. So when I set my things down, I never, ever, ever set down a needle. I always put it in my pin cushion. So this pin cushion is here to hold my needle so that I don't end up poking something. On mine, you can see here where the little tiny stitches are almost invisible. You can barely see them on there. When I got to the other end, I overlapped this part here and I put on what's called a blanket stitch. This is a very common stitch that just helped me make a little decorative edging and also so that it would be stiffer and a little bit more sturdy. Now, when I sewed this part on, I actually sewed it twice. I sewed it on the inside and then I decided that I wanted it to stick up a little bit there. I thought that was a fun little addition. And um, if I get a chance with some embroidery floss, I'm going to make a pattern that goes back and forth over that just for fun. But that depends on if I have some time. So here I now have my mitt and it is made out of a nice merino wool. This is the exact same kind of thing that I would wear while I am outside, especially on cool fall days, or maybe I don't need a full outfit, but I do want just a little extra warmth in my layers. So there might be things around your home, especially old socks that have holes in them and things like that, that you can repurpose and give them a new life as something different.